So often in Excel, you have, for example, life expectancy, and you want to get it in bands. And you want to either do that in your source table like this, or you want to do it in an output to get kind of like a histogram like this or a pivot chart that can show you these numbers and the bands or in a pivot table. So my name is David and I'm and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. I love talking about the new stuff. But in this video, we're going to look at 10 different ways to do this. In particular, my favorites, which are pivot tables, the frequency function, and then this cool new thing that you can do with Excel online called formula by examples. So here I have these countries and their life expectancies. So what I'm going to do is first just select it, and I'm going to show you the built-in method first. So insert, and then go to histogram and choose this one. Uh, and this one is okay, but it gives you very little flexibility in things. So for example, for this one, I can't say that I only want the axis every two or every five. There's just no way to do that. So you can say the minimum and maximum, but not the bands in between. This one you can, but you come across a lot of issues from my experience. So you can't have a minimum value, um, and you can have a underflow and overflow, but these get into kind of tricky scenarios. So it's, a, it's quite difficult to manage. Bin width 9.3, that's the default because I wanted to do it on four bins, which is not ever what I would use. Why would you do that as a default? Whereas if I do three, then it automatically starts at this. And you can do an underflow bin to start somewhere, but I can't get it to start at 50, for example. It won't start at 50. You can't set a minimum. What you can do is if you really want to, I can do 53, and then it forces it to do that. Then it has one that is under 53, but that's not really what I want to do in this case. And that's the only way to get it to work out this way. If I reset it, then also it gives you these decimal places, and you can change them here, but it gets kind of tricky, and I prefer not to have to do that and then set it up there. So I don't really love these histograms. Uh, the idea is good, but I prefer to make them in other ways. So another chart that I do like better is you also have the Pareto chart, which is this one, which kind of sorts it and does a cumulative line. Um, I like this for other reasons. I don't like it with numbers. I like it with categories. But I have another video where I talk about that. Um, how do I make a histogram? What's another way to do it? Well, I select my data, and I go to the Insert tab, and I choose Pivot Table here. And then I'm going to go to Existing Worksheet and Location. If you've never used pivot tables before, I have a great introductory video, but for here, we're just going to build them like that. So let me do this so that it appears next to it. So here, I've got life expectancy. I'm going to put that in rows and in values. In values, I'm going to change to summarize by count. And here's what's cool. I can right click on the rows numbers and I can choose group. I really like this feature. And here I have the same sort of thing I can do start at 50 and finish at 85 and go by fives like that. And here I can set the starting point. It calls it underflow, but I can just say starting point there is below. And it does it like that. And it's super easy for me to then change to group it by say two and press okay as well. And then we'll do it till 86, that's okay as well. And then if I want a histogram type chart, I can insert a regular column chart. I can delete the things that I don't need, right click and hide all field buttons on chart. That's usually what I do. Then I can right click and choose format data series, make it zero widths and go to the format and choose the outline to be white. And essentially I have created the same as this histogram, but I have way more flexibility. Now the real statisticians will notice the square brackets and the uh, round brackets. The square brackets means it stops at 58.000, whereas the continuous ones are with these circular brackets. But for me, who's not that specific about deep stats, I find that this is completely fine. So I prefer to do that. What you may have also noticed in my pivot table is I have my field list with a long list down here. Uh, your default is probably like this, but I really recommend changing it by clicking there and choosing this one. Most people have laptops now which have kind of smaller screens from top to bottom. So if they do this, then they'll be able to see way more without scrolling up and down. Here it doesn't make a difference, but often it does. 
So a couple of things to note. One thing about pivot tables is that it will not do anything with the jump. So here it's 52 to 54, and then the next one is 64 to 66. So it's got nothing in between there, which means that it's kind of deceptive to look at it like this versus your histogram histogram, which will show you the full thing. The other thing is for everything we've looked at so far, these are fixed. You can't have one band that is, say, 10 years, and then the next band is going to be two years. Whereas there are other options for that that we'll look at later on. Um, let me go to Excel on the web because the next version, which I really love, is only available in Excel on the web. So if I go to File and then Info, I can then choose Opal File Location and then navigate to the file like this. Note that this is available to download this file. So the link to download the example file is in the description below. And here I'm going to make this into a table. So to do the next couple of these, you have to have your data in a source table. Uh, you can do this in Excel online or offline, but you go to format as table and you choose one, or you choose control L as a shortcut. Make sure this is ticked. Great. And now I'm going to actually insert some blank columns. And I'm going to say here that this is going to be between 65 to 70. Press enter. And then here I'm going to say 75 to 80. Press enter. And then it's going to give me this, which is so cool. It's going to write a formula for me based on what I've done. If I want it, I can press apply. And I can rename this to bands like that, which is really great. So this is a table. And if you add in a new column, so small bands, it automatically gives you that new adjustment. And here I'm going to do smaller ones. So here I'm going to say 66 to 68. And here I'm going to say 78 to 80. And here I'm going to say, there we go. It's already done it for me. Show formula, it's done the same, but just with twos, apply, that is great. I wouldn't even know where to start writing out this formula. So I love that it's done it for me because it's not that easy to do. I didn't actually need this for this example. Uh, so there are a couple of other ways that you can do this. So back in Excel desktop, you can do a similar thing using something called Power Query. So if I make this into a table, then I can go to the data tab from table arrange, and then we'll open up a whole new table that's not even Excel anymore. I can go to add column and I can choose column from examples. And here I can give it the same example. So I'm going from this one. So I can say 65 to 70, press enter, and it will actually give it to me on one. And I can rename this if I want to. So I can call this uh, life x uh, bins. Press OK. And it will do just that. Or uh, let's say that a more complicated example. So let's say I add a column for rounding, rounding to zero decimal places. And let's say that this is actually an age. So forget that this is before life expectancy. Let's just say we just have an age column. So age is discrete. So you wouldn't say someone is 67.2 years old. So I'm going to add a column from examples here. And here you might need a little bit more coaching. I can scroll here to see it. I can say, for example, 60 to 69, press enter. And it doesn't quite know what to do. But then I can give it another example. And I can say 70 to 79. Press enter, and now it knows what to do. And I can call this age range, like that. Press OK. It does do a formula that is using Power Query coding language M. That's not the Excel coding language, but it works pretty much the same. When you're done with anything in Power Query, go to the Home tab and press Close and Load. And it will create this new green table with the name of the sheet being that. And you can amend it in your source data and then click on Refresh All or Refresh here and it will refresh it as need be. So let's say that I have this one with non-standard length. So 50 to 58, 58 to 62, 62 to 67, etc. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something that can give me based on whatever I have. So the first one we're gonna do is based on outputs and the rest are going to be based on the input table. So equals frequency. First, I take my data array, press a comma, keep an eye on this, then you have your bins array. Your bins array, you need the end point. All the others, you need your start point, but this one, you need an end point. Close your brackets, press enter, and this is how it is. So there's one between 50 and 58, 
and I can maybe see that if I sort it like this. Yep, that one. And then over 79, there's five. So one, two, three, four, five. There you go. So that's what it's done. And it returns it in this kind of blue outline thing called a dynamic array. If you have Excel 2021 or 365, this will work. If you have an older version, you will need to do something slightly different. Select it, pre-select the data, and write equals frequency. Same thing. So I'm going to select my data. Note that if this wasn't a table, it would just show me like this. And then I can press a comma, and then I can select the end ones like that again. It will always do it one under the last one. So close my brackets, and then instead of pressing Enter, I press Control Shift Enter, and it will give me a result like that. Notice here you have the, uh, the curly brackets around it. So this is array formulas before dynamic arrays were available. But if you have the newer Excel, then this works fine, and you don't need all that complicated extra stuff. So the last three are going to be inside the source table. We're going to do XLOOKUP, and then I'm going to add in some new columns. We're going to do just lookup, not a V, and V lookup. If you have Excel 2021 or 365 and you're using VLOOKUPs, stop immediately because XLOOKUPs are not only easier to use, but they can do way more. So if I do equals XLOOKUP and I have my lookup value, which is this, comma, my lookup array is going to be the column, just this column. Press F4 to lock that in so I can scroll it down, comma. Then my return array is going to be the bands. Press F4. Again, these don't have to be standard, but then... Uh, it's going to find an exact match by default, but if I press comma and comma again, because if not found, we don't care about that, comma again is match mode. Keep an eye on this. Curly brackets, things are optional. So I want the exact match or next smaller item, or note that I could have done the end ones and done the other option. So I can either double click that or type in the number or press tab, and then I can close my brackets because the last one I don't need. Because you're in a table, you press enter, it will fill that down. If I wasn't in a table, then... Uh, something like this would happen, enter, and then you'd need to drag it down for that to do it. Tables are great for lots and lots of reasons, and here's 79 and over. So a, a lookup is the easiest way to do it. So what I can do is I can select this value, comma, and then I can select these three, press F4, and it will look at the last column. So I close my brackets, and it will do it like that. As I disabled the table auto stuff down, I need to drag it down. But it will give you the same results. Uh, VLOOKUP, so this was Excel's third most used function until XLOOKUP came in. And the lookup value is going to be this one. Uh, also note that because I'm in a table, this is happening. Let me go to table and convert to range because this will be more what you're used to if you haven't used tables. But if you haven't, tables are great. So equals VLOOKUP, and then lookup value is going to be this, comma. Table array has to be all of this, F4. And then I need to count column one, column two, column three. And then I need to do range lookup. So do either one or true because you're doing an approximate match. So that is what it's showing you there. And drag that down, and it gives you like that. Note that because we're not in a table, um, if I drag down, it will forget my borders and that will supersede it, unless I do fill without formatting, uh, which is something that I really like doing as well. But for now, let's look at the final version of the histogram. So here I've got put in my start and my end and my bands. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the data tab and I'm going to choose data analysis. And I'm going to press histogram, press OK. So once I've done that, I'm going to go to my input range and I'm going to choose this. I'm going to include my headers and bin range, I am going to put in the start bins. And then here I have the options. I want this in a new worksheet, fine. And then what are the things I want here? I'm just going to put a chart output and then press OK. We'll look at what the other ones are. Oh, it says you need to click on the labels if you are going to do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> here you go. So here is how it's going to look. Um, where it's got the start and the frequency, <laughs> nothing particularly exciting there. But if I go back to here, and let's look at some of the other options, so data analysis, histogram, it does save what you did. And let's look at the 
Pareto and cumulative. So cumulative will keep adding it and Pareto will then sort it as well. So here it is. Now it's sorted it kind of backwards and it's no, it's not bad. It's in, in no order whatsoever. It's just putting the first biggest one first and like that. If you'd have just done cumulative percentages, they would have gone up by the band area, but not had these ones. I don't love this at all either. It puts up to 150%, which obviously you're never going to get to. So it's not really that great either. My favorite is the pivot tables for this type. So um, one thing that I will mention is that in data, data analysis, you will only see this option if you install the add-in. So file and then options and add-ins. Then you need this thing called the analysis tool pack. So Excel add-ins and go uh, and then click and put a tick next to that one, analysis tool pack. This is the only way that you can have it. Uh, and it's been there for eons, but you do need to install the analysis tool pack to get the histogram version working there. Personally, I don't love the histogram feature, but I love a lot of other things like the t-tests, the regressions, it works with multiple regressions and a lot of other useful things. So it's useful to have this in the back burner, even if you're not using it all the time and even if the histograms in it are not very good. All right, so my top ones are definitely the frequency one, the formula by example that we did with Excel Online that's coming to Excel Desktop at some point. So maybe by the time you're watching this video, it works there as well. Um, and then pivot tables, and I love the ability to switch it with group. I end up using the pivot tables one probably the most often. And then a chart off of this instead of the built-in histogram that I think has a lot of disadvantages. All right, so if you like this video, then please consider clicking the like button. And I have tons of new videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff in particular. Thanks for watching.